Hi folks, I'm Sarah, welcome to my channel where I'm posting an art video every day for the month of October. Today is day 13 of the 2018 Inktober Drawing Challenge and the word prompt for today is guarded. Now it took me a while to decide what I was going to draw today with my animal theme, but in the end I decided to draw a mum and baby goose since geese are extremely good at guarding their territory against unwelcome visitors, especially if they have little babies to protect. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon as well if you don't want to miss out on any future videos. So my aim for today was to go for a bit of a looser feel so far as the background was concerned and try out the negative painting technique on some of the goose feathers. Now I had a bit of a go with this style of painting a long while ago now when I painted a flamingo in watercolour but haven't really tried it again since then and thought it would be fun to try it on this ink painting today. But before I started on the feathers I began by painting the goose's beak and eye using a dip pen and neat black ink to get the fine details in and a tiny paintbrush just to fill in the rest and add a bit of water to dilute the black ink on the lighter areas. Once this was done I then wetted the head and neck of the goose and then used my dip pen again to add neat black ink. I really like using the dip pen in this way because it allows you to add in the shape of little feathers like on the neck of the goose that a larger paintbrush wouldn't. So then with the outline done I could go in whilst the paper was still wet and flesh out the rest of the goose's neck. And then it was time to move on to the body of the goose and I decided to lay down some lighter values of the colours I wanted to use as I thought this would make a good base for the negative painting technique around the feathers. Now I'm no expert at this technique but the idea is that instead of painting in the feathers themselves or the positive space you paint the area around the feathers or the negative space and this technique can give some really effective results but does take a little bit of getting used to. So I began on the left hand side of the goose by wetting the whole area first and dropping in a mixture of black, blue and terracotta ink. I repeated this on the right hand side and left that area to dry. Now with hindsight and to prevent the need for too many layers later on, I could have gone darker at this initial stage but that's something I've learned today and with practice and more confidence using this technique I will hopefully get better at it. So whilst that was still drying I moved on to the little chick and put in the details of his eye and beak just using a waterproof fine liner and then added some yellow to his fluffy feathers. And I was really worried about losing the details on this chick underneath the darker feathers of the mother goose so I kept him quite light to start with. On the reference picture his head was laying over the darker mother goose feathers but I was concerned about how I would keep his lighter feathers over a darker background using ink and I'm still not sure if I achieved the result I was after. I think if it weren't Inktober I would probably overlay some coloured pencil to keep this fluffy texture. So then it was time for the negative painting of the mother goose feathers. So I began on the left hand side by painting around the feathers using a dilutive mixture of black and blue ink and I really enjoyed this part but as I said it does take a little bit of getting used to and that's why I did my initial outline sketch a little bit darker today just so that I could see clearly where the individual feathers were but it was so much fun I played around with adding some terracotta shades and some dark browns black and hints of blue as well each time making sure the underneath layer was dry before adding another layer on top and so you'll see why I said I could have gone darker initially as ink does dry lighter but the good thing with using permanent ink for this technique compared to the watercolours I've used before is that once it's dry you can add further layers without lifting or reactivating the colours underneath which can end up making your picture look a bit muddy and less vibrant. So I was really pleased with how it was kind of coming along but let me know if you've used this technique before, how you got on with it, if you've got any hints or tips and whether you've used it with watercolour or maybe even ink. 
so just drop me a comment in the box below as I'd love to hear how you got on with it. So the only downside to using this technique that I found today was, apart from the fact that it can take a little bit of getting used to, is the fact that it did seem to take me a lot longer than if I was painting it using regular techniques, for example. So I've been trying to stick to a fairly strict time of doing my paintings each day and trying to get them done within an hour, an hour and a half. And this did take about two hours just because I was applying so many different layers just to get the, the values that I wanted. So that is a bit of a downside. It doesn't much matter, I guess, if you're doing it and you're not on a time clock sort of thing. But for me, it was a little bit rushed towards the end. But I did really enjoy it nonetheless. And I think if you had um, longer to do things in, you could really relax and get lost in using this technique because it is pretty effective and I liked the way the feathers turned out in the end. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that my aim was to mainly concentrate on the negative painting technique and the goose's feathers today, but I thought I would just put in a fairly loose background and ended up adding some splatters and yes I didn't add my protective piece of paper to the goose's head until a few splatters later and I realised that's something that I kind of get lost in the painting and I forget to do. But um, nonetheless, I quite liked the end result and how it turned out. And let me know, I'd be interested to know what you think of this painting technique and this painting as well. So let me know in the comments box. And if you enjoyed watching this painting and you'd like to see more, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. So once I was done with the negative painting, I then just touched up and added some gel pen just to finish off the painting. So thanks for watching everyone, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you all tomorrow.